Good afternoon, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. So today's topic is case study. Doctor attempted to sell the fully equipped dental office with no patients and it was unsuccessful. What was the sequel following that? So anyway, we are now in 28 states. We have 10 employees, including two CPA accountants. And we are operational 363 days a year. We take off Christmas and Easter. You can reach us from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. Our number is 201-663-0935. And our website is dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebroker.com. So call us anytime. We'll give you some free advice. Buyer or seller, we're here to help you. Now, the information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. If you're thinking about also selling to a DSO, please call us. If you have a larger office over like 1.3 million, you have at least five operatories, please give us a call and uh, we'll pick and choose who we think the best DSO is for you. We don't work for them, we're independent. And also, uh, often there will be no legal fees for you, that the fee, legal fees will get reimbursed at closing and commission will often be uh, taken care of by the DSO. We've done that multiple times. Uh, so give us a call. We can explain that program. Um, thank you for tuning in today. So we had this doctor who had purchased a dental practice fully equipped but had no patients in it. And they got it for a reasonable price, under 100000 which is great. It was like two, three operatories. And they were going to run it as a satellite office. And the rent was reasonable. This was on the second floor, reasonable rent in a you know, densely populated area. So it made sense. But one thing led to another, it was just overkill because they got busy at their other office, didn't have time for this, and uh, decided to call us to put the practice on the market to sell. No patients, fully equipped, walk-in, turnkey. And it was somewhat modern, not brand new, but I'd say it was a nice equipment and clean, two operatories. But we had it on the market for a few months and it just didn't seem, about two months, didn't seem to be moving as fast as we would like because the main problem was uh, a new buyer doesn't want to build a practice. Even though it costs a lot of money to build a practice from scratch, they want to do it if they're going to do it on their terms, where they want it. So we were not able to sell that one that easily. Of course, it's only been two months. On the other hand... Um, the doctor, the seller was getting, you know, a little anxious, wanted to move along. Fortunately, the seller had negotiated with the landlord to have a few months in advance that they could, sort of a good guy clause, that you can get out of the lease if you give adequate notice. In this thing, I think it was two months is all you needed. Other good guy clauses are six months long that you can get out with notice and you're not bound by the remaining portions of the lease. The landlord lets you out. Um, so the buyer, the seller was smart to do that and I think they're going to exercise that. What's going to happen with the equipment? Because this is nice equipment. You know, x-rays on the wall um, have value to them. Even if it's 10 years old, there's value. Of course, you have to get the x-ray, a certified person to move it, to uninstall it and reinstall it for you. So there's some time and effort and cost to that too. But that is your next step. You have to liquidate the equipment. Now, to find out what the practices, uh, the equipment is worth in your area, always bear in mind that somebody has to come pick it up, disassemble it, move it, store it, and then reassemble it. X-rays have to be calibrated. There's a lot that goes on. So, um, and then those dental chairs, those things are 300, 400 pounds. You have to re uh, move it and then store it or put it right in its new location right away, which can work out. If you're trying to build an office and want an extra room, I'm a firm believer in used equipment. I know people say, well, there's no warranty, whatever. Well, you get a good dental guy, repair guy to look at, at least he give you a ballpark of, of longevity of this uh, piece of equipment. 
can't really guarantee it because it's not his, but it'd give you some rough idea. And I think that's a good way to go. You know, pick up an x-ray for like $1,200 that costs $5,000. It's going to last another 20 years. And then, yeah, you take a little, little chance that it may not be operational when you get it. But still, um, it, it, it's an opportunity. I did that at a few of our offices. You save a significant amount of money. And back then, the prices hadn't doubled or tripled like they are now. So that's an opportunity for you. And that's how this doctor is handling it. So uh, the doctor had negotiated because he had this two-month clause to give two months in advance. And the landlord would release you from the lease. So the doctor was smart enough to get that in her lease. That, he, so to speak, small good guy clause. Put that in the lease. She's able to get out. And then also, if you're going to find the equipment price for used equipment, you can go on Dental Town or you could call your local repair guy, dental repair guy, because they can move it for you. Remember, you have to disassemble it ship it, store it, and reassemble it. And not everybody wants to stand behind an x-ray that could be damaged on, on uh, you know, with movement. But you could do this with chair unit lights, a couple different things. So this is just one um, instance how this doctor handled it with the problems that they had. And nobody was buying the office, but they didn't also want to wait. They waited a little longer. I think they would have been okay, but they didn't want to wait. All right? So that's a summary analysis of everything. Uh, stay tuned. I think this week we're at the end of uh, February, beginning of March, or halfway through March. We should have a new list that's going out, March 23. Um, we just picked up about 10 practices because we went to uh, Texas and to... Uh, uh, where else did we go? We went to Texas and down, and down south to North Carolina. Picked up some great practices. So look at the new email blast that comes out every by four, four to six weeks that has all the new practices for sale. Thank you for listening. We hope that you can listen to that next time. Bye now.